Ever feel like a really different kind of escape? Maybe a journey that takes you back in time. I mean to say, just have a look around. It's a picture postcard National Trust village. About a five hour drive south of Sydney, Central Tilba is tucked away on the south coast of New South Wales. All at the base of magnificent Gallagher, also known as Mount Dromedary. Perfectly preserved heritage cottages with their mix of gold rush and dairy history. But first, I'm gonna have a quick cover with Charlie. I knew I'd find you here. Englishman with a cup of tea, of course. Why not? But how would you trip down? Sensational drive, isn't it? You've got yeah. the beaches, the mountains, the trees. I loved it. And look at this place. I love the double... Oh, goodness, thank you. Mate, I'm not going to share. <laughs> this village is sensational, isn't it? It is. History everywhere. Uh, yes. Well, if I, if I have to, it must. Mm. Every end is starting to butt up, too. Man. Yeah, well, lovely spot. Bubba, bubba, juicy fruit. Some humbugs. <laughs> Gotta love an old-fashioned lolly shop, mate. Doesn't have to be old-fashioned for me to like it. <laughs> All the gear here, mate. Mm. Little pork pie number. I think this is a lady's hat, isn't it? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they say if the hat fits. Sure. Well, it'd be criminal not to pick up some it cheese be. whilst here, hey? And some camembert. Nice. Let's do this pretty quickly, though. We've got some gardens to look at. We do, but you know, I say the hospitality. Mm -mm. Sensational. You couldn't say no. So I'm heading just a few kilometres north to the cute village of Badala. Actually, I'm heading to church. Well, sort of. <laughs> Stay with me. Hey, Graeme, how are you? I'm well, Paul, yourself? Very well, thank you. Well, how about this? What's it like to be to the manor born? Well, to the rectory born, because you're connected to the old church on the hill. Yeah, we are. So this house was built in 1864 as the rectory for the Anglican ministers. So it's actually a Thomas More property, so there's a lot of history. So how long have you been here? We've been here three and a half years. Oh, that's a short time. So you've obviously inherited a lot of previous owners' gardening design. How were your gardening skills? Thumbs green or more black, brown? Uh, they were quite black, actually. Oh, gee, <laughs> OK. So, big learning curve. Massive learning curve. I even took myself off to the local TAFE. Oh, good man. And it's nice to be finally doing what I really love. Yeah, isn't that brilliant? Ah, the parterre. Now, this has obviously been around a while. I love these two different types of, two different species, in fact, of, of buxes. Now, I understand you originally, what, the roses and mixed perennials? Yeah, there was roses, some uh, Japanese windflowers, there was a few violets in here. Right, so you've replaced it all with the cotyledon. Must be very dramatic when it comes into flower. Yeah, it looks amazing. There's beautiful orange flowers just pop up and they sit there out at top of the hedge for quite some time. And uh, it's just got a nice little red edge to the leaf. Pretty easy to grow and you don't have frost problems here? Uh, we do have frost, but this does not get affected by it. I guess the wall around the garden protects it from a bit of frost and the wind. Beautiful cypress head. How long does it take you to prune a hedge like this? Uh, each one takes me about two days. Oh, really? It's so dense. Yeah, it's Great a, privacy it's... screen. Well, that's a lot of your private time on hedging. Exactly. Yeah. We're bigger shoes and smaller smiles and we'll be so tall. And as we grow, they'll never know we won't grow up at all. Mulberries are such a, an important part of a country garden. In fact, they've got two here, maybe three on the other side. They've got lots of shade, but they've chosen really good plants. Paul's brought in uh, different hellebores, dark pinks, double white. The white looks like 
Mrs. Betty Renica, which is a really old variety developed here in Australia. There's also the Japanese anemone, the windflower. The flowers will stand up nice and tall again in autumn, so it's a garden for all seasons. Do you think that I'll never get myself together? And then in spring, beautiful boughs of double flowering cherry. I think the variety is Kanzan. Fabulous. Well, the garden, and in fact, the whole district is really welcoming these late spring rains, going through to quite a dramatic part of the garden. In fact, the design is taken from one of the church lead light windows at the rectory, the rectory garden, it's the church garden. And the colours are really strong colours. And the purple behind me here is Fertinia glabra, not Fertinia rubens, which has a smaller leaf. And of course, the wisteria, the whites and the pinks. Floribunda is the longer raceme of, uh, of wisteria. And then you've got the little short white one. Beautiful perfume, the bees love it on a hot spring day, unlike today when it's a little bit moist. Ah, uh, there's dedication working on the espalier in the rain. But what a fantastic array of fruit trees. You know, plums and peaches and apples, they're all here. Yeah, having fun with these espaliers? Uh, yeah, they take a fair bit of work in winter when they need to be pruned, yes. but uh, we do love them and they, uh, they produce a lot of fruit. And of course, they take up less space and you get more trees in. Yeah, exactly. And what about the public able to come and see? Yeah, we hope to be opening real soon. Well, thank you for yep. sharing it today. Check our website for the details when this beautiful garden of pools will be open.